This is Tantrum, written by Kriva, part 14 of Surrogate, the Director's Cut. The rating is Teen and Up Audiences. The category is General. The archive warning is Graphic Depictions of Violence. The fandom is Malevolent, the podcast. Additional tags. No goats are harmed in this fic, but a fucked up little creature is. It's difficult when you're a baby and you get jealous for the first time. Voices by Alexis as Dis, Vampirism as the narrator and Pharaoh, Flamia as Hoster, SSJ Trinity, Kriva, and Somnia as the work introduction. Editing by Flamia, directed by Vampirism, transcript by Saffron, Created and posted with permission from the authors of Surrogate, the Director's Cut. Jealousy is a new sensation for an infant elder god. It does not go well. Nibbles is a very good girl. Mother had asked this of her, after all, before she had been sent on this most important of missions. She was to watch over this Faro Lester Yellow and be her friend and guard her against the intrusions of the others. All of this was made incredibly easy because Faro Lester Yellow was a baby. Just like her. Within the hour of their meeting, Nibbles was given a name, four ribbons, five slices of cake, and Nibbles had in return given the girl her heart. They had been inseparable since. Or, at least, Nibbles did her best to ensure that happened. That is what perhaps led her to this scenario, where Faroe had been led by Captain Dis to the courtyard, at which point Nibbles was staring down a dragon. The dragon stared right back, head fins clamped tight in caution when she saw her, which was a very smart and reasonable thing to do when exposed to the offspring of a god. She easily was ten times the goatling's size, and certainly twenty times her weight, but Nibbles surveyed the situation like she had so many things with passionate disregard for anything but the safety of her charge. Perot was not used to a great many things being so big, with the exception of Daddy, of course, and her tiny hand sought out one of the cracks between Nibbles' bark, right beneath where her chin connected with her elegant neck. Nibbles stared at the dragon, two dozen-odd eyes sharp in focus. The dragon broke, glancing at Captain Dis, and Nibbles let out a small bleat of victory. She then shook herself quite vigorously, the bells Faro had borrowed, stolen, from the music hall chiming happily. Faro took a careful step forward. Captain Dis's face broke into an easy smile. Good job, kiddo. Now, hold her hand out so she can sniff. Just like we practice. Faro extended her tiny fist and squealed happily when a puff of scorching hot air blew her hair back. <laughs> Very good. Captain Dis put one hand on her hip, nodding. Now, come around here slowly. I'll show you how to mount her, and then we can begin your riding lessons. This, Nibbles had not been told. This... Nibbles had not expected. Nibbles pinned her ears back and stamped her hoof. And the dragon skittered closer to her handler in response. Captain Dis looked up, eyebrows raised, as Faro spun on her heel and shot her a questioning look. The expression on Faro's face was enough to send Nibbles into doubt and while she stamped her hoof again, she lowered her head and let out a plaintive bleat. Please. I usually ride her. 
has to warn me about this. It's all right, honey. Just... She approached, and Nibbles pinned her ears again, not in genuine anger, but in surprise, before the captain got down on one knee with a soft grunt. <laughs> Dis was now too short to look her in the face while kneeling, particularly after Nibbles' last growth spurt, but she was able to meet the gaze of the eyes peeking through the cracks of Nibbles' bark-armored chest. It's okay to be jealous, sweetie. Jealous? Heresy! Nibbles let out a bleat of disagreement. Yeah, whatever you say. Which made Nibbles think she had not understood her at all. But here's the deal. Girl has to learn to ride, and Hasser wants her to be able to ride anything. I've been instructed to teach her, so we're starting with Amira here, and maybe once you get bigger, we can switch to bow training on her back. How's that sound? It sounded like an argument Nibbles could not win, and with her most impressive glower, she stalked to the corner and settled down on the grass. She then took a moment to stretch her neck just so, just enough to send a rippling of teeth through the cracks between her bark to properly show her displeasure. Captain Dis seemed unmoved by her incredibly ferocious display, shook her head, and helped Faro get mounted on the dragon's back. The tendrils on her stomach rooted to the ground as Nibbles watched, and she contemplated eating Captain Dis. Except she liked Captain Dis, and Faro liked Captain Dis, and it wasn't the captain's fault anyway. Jealousy was a terrible word. She did not like it. She had never been jealous before. There was nothing to be jealous of in the woods. Mother was always there, her attention always present, and her siblings, though so much larger and stronger than her tiny form, even the youngest of them, had played with her and each other interchangeably. This sensation was alien to her, and she knew just who had caused this terrible feeling. As she mulled on it, watching Faro float like a tiny white snowflake on a massive red blanket, Nibbles made a decision. For the first time in her life, she was going to be bad. It took very little to get Faro to sleep once her lessons had started. She was often tired and crabby by the time either Daddy or the dancers escorted her to her rooms, and once she was asleep, Nibbles's second task began. She first would check all the corners of the room, sniffing for any hint of smoke, and then would test the wards Haster had set at the windows. They remained adequate, at least to her knowledge. It was then that she checked the door, made sure it was bespelled properly, and finally she exited into the hall to do a quick patrol 200 feet in either direction to ensure nothing was crawling up adjacent to her charge. Most nights, it was nothing, and she would return to Faroe's side to lay her head on the pillows the girl had provided for her and keep watch until morning. Tonight was more interesting. After... Confronting an interloper, she took a detour into a different hall of the palace. Her hooves tapped daintily on the floor, and she made no effort to hide herself as she trotted. Courtiers shuddered out of her way, darting into doorways or pressing against walls, and Nibbles paid them no mind. She pushed open a large set of double doors to find her quarry the gallery. There was much to see. Statues, gleaming items of gold and precious gems, tapestries, paintings, all manner of beautiful things. Nibbles stopped before one, a large porcelain vase whose painted face glimmered and shifted before her eyes. A woman sobbed as a robed figure slew a man before her. 
and his blood poured out of his opened chest and flowed onto the rippling lake below. It was labeled the Fall of Yatil. Ironic. Nibbles butted the plinth the vase was on and it swayed, making a soft ringing sound before toppling to the ground in a deafening crash. She was halfway through tearing a painting off the wall with her teeth when Haster arrived. You! She stared at him, ears pinned, eyes narrowed, and hissed. You will stop this at once. The god paused at the scene of Nibbles' first crime. I know you can understand me, you wretched little beast. Nibbles trotted over to a statue, staring at it intently. It was a man who had torn out his own heart, which glistened in the red marble like it was still bleeding. Do you believe this is a game? Nibbles turned to look at him, standing before the statue. I will not entertain the tantrum. Nibbles raised her back right hoof. Don't you dare! She kicked the statue's pedestal and it toppled, <laughs> scattering shattered marble across the gallery floor. You vile little shit! He towered over her. Do you think for even a second that I wouldn't destroy you if not for your mother? Nibbles stared him down, ears pinned, staring silently for a long moment. <coughs> and then she retched and coughed up her prize from her nightly labor, a rat, bloody and half-chewed, and with an enormous, darting eyeball planted in its back. The wretched creature attempted to scurry away before she planted her hoof on its tail, leaving it squealing and writhing in its desperation to escape. I see. The god pulled back, if only just. So you do perform some task to my daughter's benefit. Nibbles snorted lip curling and bearing a set of teeth that were decidedly unungulate. I am not seizing for rose lessons, but I will instruct the captain to incorporate you, as long as you behave. Nibble stared at the god for a long, terse moment. And then her head snaked down to grab the rat thing, whipping it back and forth in her teeth as it squealed for mercy, finally opening the plates in her chest to shove the creature in and silence it permanently with a well-timed crunch. Revolting. Get out of my sight. His tentacles curled in abject disgust as he slipped away to brood over her mess. Nibbles trotted back to Faroe's room, head held high, slipping under the door like a shadow. Nibbles? The goatling trotted to her Faroe's bedside, setting down her head next to the girl's outstretched hand, and to her great pleasure, she received nose pets. Where'd you go, silly? <laughs> I forgive you. Her eyes fluttered shut as she drifted back asleep. Nibble stayed there until morning, and Faro rode on her back all the way down to the courtyard for her lessons. If you enjoyed this production of Surrogate, the Director's Cut, please read the original written work on AO3, where it is still actively updating as of June 2024. A link is in the work notes, where you can also find the social medias of all the production cast. Malevolent was written and produced by Harlan Guthrie, and all characters depicted here belong to their respective creators. The cast and management produced this show for no monetary gain, and all rights remain with the authors. Any sound effects or music used in this production were obtained legally 
or are created by the production cast. Please let us know your thoughts, and as Kane would say, Stay tuned for the next episode!